Well, and thank you for attending the meeting tonight. Uh, before our meeting officially begins, we'll have an invitation offered by Commissioner Brady, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings on the people who have been called to lead the community in which we live, work, and play. Remind us that we are not only leaders, but also servants, and that it is our responsibility to serve the common good of all. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Professor, would you call the roll for the last city commission meeting in this building, please? Ms. Lloyd? Here. Ms. Fine? Here. Mr. Brady? Here. Mr. Murray? Here. Mr. Lockhart? Here. Mr. Poole? Here. Mr. Wadding? Here. Commissioners, you have before you the minutes of our meeting of May 28, 2019. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddington. I move that we accept the minutes of the May 28th meeting and dispense with the formal reading. Second. There's been a motion and second. Discussion? Without objection, the motion be approved. In hearing no objection, the motion is approved. We turn to audience participation. Anyone having any comments to share with the commission about any of our legislation tonight? Please step to the microphone and share with us your thoughts or questions. Seeing no one move to the microphone, let me just say, do you wish to, to, to it's, it's about pending legislation, sir? Uh, this is my first time ever coming to you. So I just had one grievance, that's all. So oh. Okay. So I we. Think now or later. For later, part the later sort of open-ended part later on, that would be an appropriate time to raise that issue. Then, okay, all right. Uh, it pertains to city business, I'm assuming, correct? Okay, very good. We'll, we'll, we'll wait till later on then. Um, I did want to announce to the folks back home uh, that if you see um, a, a change in our background at the next meeting, it's because we will be in the new city hall. Um, so on our June 24th meeting, we're all very excited about uh, what's coming up. There's a lot of work to do, I know, for staff uh, to prepare for that, uh, but we're looking forward to that. It's been a long slog. I think I and others have been talking about that for Almost 14 years. It's been a long, long time. So, um, Mr. Waddington, I think you were talking about it uh, even the, earlier than that. So maybe pushing 20, I suppose. Um, but it's time. But we'll miss this building. We've had a lot of um, good work that we've done in this room with a really great team uh, that's been assembled in, in recent years. Um, and it's served the community for uh, many decades now. And um, um, But it's time to move on. So. Commissioners, we do have one proclamation tonight that is being presented by Commissioner Lloyd. And Ms. Lloyd, I'll turn the floor over to you. Fantastic. Um, good evening. I just want to say happy Pride Month to everyone with it being June. Um, and talking about where Sandusky is moving, um, where it's come from and where it's moving to. We're very excited to move to the new city hall, but we've also done so much with anti-discrimination legislation lately and becoming a welcoming city that... Um, this is a great time um, to be doing a proclamation like this. Um, we do have Mr. Christopher Hansen um, in the audience if you'd like to come up so I can do this. All right, so whereas the 1969 Stonewall riots in Manhattan were a tipping point for the gay liberation movement in the United States for persons who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer, and in the years since, the month of June has been designated across America as Pride Month, recognizing the impact LGBTQ individuals have had on, hist on history locally, nationally, and internationally. And whereas on June 12, 2016, a mass shooting inside the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida, left 49 people dead, another 68 people wounded, the deadliest incident of violence against LGB LGBTQ people in U.S. history, and since the shooting, many survivors and family members of the victims have dedicated themselves to fighting against hate crimes and intolerance while advocating for acceptance and understanding. And whereas, because of this tragic event, cities across America are setting aside June 11th as a day of reflection, education, and advocacy to facilitate acceptance within their communities, homes, schools, work, and places of worship. And whereas the city of Sandusky adopted an ordinance in 2017, which created a community relations commission tasked with making recommendations 
to prevent discriminatory practices and to aid in seeing no persons are deprived of equal services by reasons of discrimination on account of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, age, marital status, political orientation, or sexual orientation. And whereas during the weekend of June 20th, 2019, the second annual Sandusky Pride Festival will take place in downtown Sandusky, an all-inclusive event endorsing equality while targeting togetherness and unity. And whereas there is still much work to be done for love to prevail, the city continues to advocate and do good works to achieve equal justice and equal opportunity for the LGBTQ Americans and protect people against hate crimes and violence based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Now, therefore, it be resolved. The Sandusky City Commission hereby proclaims June 10th as Reflections of Resilience Day and the month of June 2019 as Pride Month in the, Sandu in the city of Sandusky, calling upon residents and visitors to come together to remember those who have been killed or wounded by acts of hate or violence and commit themselves to acceptance of diversity and putting an end to senseless acts of violence. Dated this 10th day of June, 2019. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a runner and I went to my car. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Lloyd. And, you know, I, I'm particularly proud of Sandusky. We uh, were able to pass the anti-discrimination language, or legislation, excuse me, in 2017, if I remember correctly. And uh, we did it um, in, in consultation with all of our major businesses, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. We got a lot of input. There were no objections. We made a couple of modifications to the legislation as it moved through to uh, take into account some things that hadn't been considered. Uh, but um, here we are, two years later, um, we are able to, we're able to accomplish in a little old Sandusky what the General Assembly of the state of Ohio and I think about 40% of, general, of uh, state legislatures across the country still have not accomplished. So good for us, good for Sandusky. Um, commissioners, we have a number of communications recommending uh, various pieces of legislation. Would someone care to make a motion to accept those? So moved. Second. Then a motion, second discussion. Without objection, the motion will be approved. And here, no objection, the motion is approved. Ms. Cresser, would you present item number one, please? Yes, item number one is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into a contract with Great Lakes Demolition of Vickery, <coughs> Ohio, for the Thorpe Drive Culvert Replacement Project, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, Ms. Twine. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules and full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. There's been a motion and second. Discussion? Uh, Mr. Klein, we're spending a good deal of money here. Could you give the public an overview of what it is that we're hoping to accomplish? Mr. Mr. President, this project uh, came about when ODOT was doing a bridge inspection uh, a couple years ago on the Thorpe Drive culvert. Um, they came in in 2017 and did a load rating on that culvert and found out that we needed to put weight restrictions on it. Came back in 2018 and did the same thing. So we've posted new weight limits on that culvert. And they also recommended replacing the steel culvert because of the amount of corrosion that, that it had at the time. So we worked through the design process and applied to OPWC for some funding at 50-50. <coughs> so half of the project will be paid for OPWC and half of the project with uh, sewer funds. Um, and as part of the replacement project, we will also be putting sidewalks in. There's a portion on one side of the road that doesn't have sidewalks. We'll also be replacing it on the west side of the road. And to leverage additional funds, we knew that this project was going to score pretty highly with OPWC. So we also threw in some of the resurfacing portion so we could get that paid for at 50-50 as well. So that we will also be resurfacing Thorpe Drive from uh, Venice Road to Venice Heights Boulevard and we couldn't do all of Thorpe because it would have uh, changed our application so we got as much as we could out of it to uh, maximize our points. Thank you Mr. Klein. Commissioners questions or comments? 
Mr. Presser, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Fine? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Washington? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Waddington? That ordinance is adopted. Now we turn the meeting over to Mr. Klein for the Mr. Klein cars and trucks <laughs> portion of the meeting. It remains a mystery to me as to how these things get aggregated uh, in certain meetings, but here we do have a number of very old and tired vehicles that are ready to be replaced. So, Mr. Kresser, would you present item number two, please? Yes, item two is an ordinance declaring a 2001 <coughs> GMC 1500 Sierra truck as unnecessary and unfit for city use pursuant to section 25 of the city charter, authorizing and directing the city manager to purchase a 2019 Ford F-350 4x4 regular cab truck with snowplow from Middleton Ford of Middleton, Ohio through the State of Ohio Department of Administrative Services Cooperative Purchasing Program for the Water Distribution Division and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Mr. having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Twine. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules and full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. There's been a motion and second. <coughs> Discussion? Uh, kidding aside, Mr. Klein, uh, uh, which want to want to advise the public uh, that all of these vehicle purchases are, are pursuant to the State of Ohio Department of Administrative Services Cooperative Purchasing Program. And what that basically means is we get the, um, the negotiating power of the state and local governments combined together to make sure that we get the best price. So we're not out there um, giving the um, contract to a favorite vendor. It's something that uh, the state makes sure we get the best price that we possibly can. And we're very appreciative of that, of that service that the state provides. Questions or comments, commissioners? Mrs. Crestor, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Watson? Yes. The ordinance? Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Waddington? <coughs> that ordinance is adopted. Item number three, please. Item number three is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to purchase a 2020 Ford <coughs> Transit Connect cargo van from Middletown Ford of Middletown, Ohio, through the State of Ohio Department of Administrative Services Cooperative Purchasing Program for the Water Distribution Division, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lloyd. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. Okay. Then a motion and second. Discussion? Mrs. Crusher, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Washington? And now on the ordinance? Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Washington? <coughs> That ordinance is adopted. Item number four, please. Item number four is an ordinance declaring a 1999 Chevrolet 3500 truck as unnecessary and unfit for city use, pursuant to section 25 of the city charter, authorizing and directing the city manager to purchase a 2019 Ford F-350 4x4 regular cab and chassis truck from Middletown Ford of Middletown, Ohio, to the State of Ohio Department of Administrative Services Cooperative Purchasing Program for the Water Distribution Division, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddington. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules and full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. A motion and second. Discussion? Presser, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. Item number five, please, Mrs. Presser. Item number five is an ordinance 
declaring the 1972 GMC 3500 value van as unnecessary and unfit for city use, pursuant to section 25 of the city charter, authorizing and directing the city manager to purchase a 2019 Ford E450 two-wheel drive cutaway truck with mounted mainline TV inspection summit system from MT Tech Company of Cleveland, Ohio, through the State of Ohio Department of Administrative Services Cooperative, Cooperative Purchasing Program for the Sewer Maintenance Division, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, Ms. Twine. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. Okay. Okay. a motion and second. Discussion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brady. Mr. Klein, I, I'm okay with buying these trucks for $25,000, $35,000, but you have a doozy here. <laughs> what, what, what are, tell us what we're getting. You get a, a truck we're going to spy on our neighbors with? Or what? Okay. So um, I would actually like to uh, put a pr promo in for the touch a truck because I know we've had this truck, the existing truck that we have at that event, uh, quite a few times in the past, and I know a lot of people have commented on it. It's, it's a pretty unique piece of equipment. Um, what it is is it's a camera truck, and it allows us to get inside the sewer system and by remote control go in and video and record exactly what's going on throughout the system. The truck that we have now is uh, it's actually a few years older than I am. It's from 1972 but it only has about 17,000 miles on it. So this is the type of, of equipment that might not be as much wear and tear on the body of it, but there's quite a bit of wear and tear on all the equipment that comes with it. Those cameras, the uh, obviously from 1972, the software is a little bit older and not as compatible with current software. So this allows us to find leaks. It allows us to... Um, basically just go throughout the entire system and one of the nice things that we're going to have on this new truck is the software is going to be compatible with our GIS system so we will be able to uh, upload and, and make sure that we're maintaining our asset management a little bit better in the future. So I don't know if there's any other questions but hopefully um, one of the reasons that we want to get this truck this truck uh, ordered as quickly as possible is because we still don't anticipate getting it uh, before the end of the year. So I doubt it'll be ready by this year's touch of truck. Hopefully we'll have it in next year's and everybody will be able to see this new piece of equipment. So to answer Mr. Brady's specific question, you'd only be able to spy on your neighbors if they're living down in the sewer. In the sewer. Yes, we can spy on the rats. Well, the, the, uh, the um, you know, it's been quite a process over the last uh, five, six years of replacing some, really five years, replacing some of this ancient equipment. And I joked a little bit about, you know, this being the air and climb, uh, cars and trucks night. But we have, um, you know, we, we do have serious costs when we have down, uh, when we have equipment that's down. Uh, we have personnel who are, ain't, are, are not able to do their jobs. Uh, the equipment has to be repaired. Uh, we're much more productive when we have uh, equipment that's up and running. Um, and, you know, we take a look at the capital assets that the city has. These are, these are important capital assets. This is, this is much a part of how we do the job as a city hall or, or anything else. Um, and I'm, I'm very grateful to the voters that we've been able to. Um, I don't know how far we are away from being totally caught up, but we have made some significant investments, and we'll always be making investments in trucks and cars. It's just the nature of the, of the business that we're in. But we're in much better shape today. It was just a couple of years ago, Mr. Soloway, you remember, maybe ever one, I think it was two years ago, the audit findings came back and said, you know, we're pretty good in every area except our capital investments were lagging and that was going to hurt our productivity. And so um, each time we pass one of these pieces of legislation, uh, it does bring us up uh, to a point that we can provide better services to our residents. So appreciate your diligence and all the staff that make sure that we are getting what we need to our employees so they can do the job that they I know they want to do. Um, additional questions or comments on this legislation? Can I say one more Please. thing? To that point, um, it's been really nice seeing the fact that, um, similar to the police cruisers and any other vehicles like uh, 
um, not, not necessarily this specific piece of equipment, but other ones, if they can be repurposed within the city and be reused in another department, we certainly are doing that. We're spreading them out. We're not just looking to buy new and, and offload uh, equipment that's still serviceable and usable. So we are trying to figure out the best way to maximize that as well. And that's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that because your, your, your communication you know, indicates where that equipment is being repurposed. We didn't mention that tonight, but you always, uh, or, or your, you, the folks on your team, always make sure that uh, if it's reusable, it is reused, and, and uh, we say exactly where it's going. So, uh, additional questions or comments? Mr. Presser, would you poll the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Watson? Yes. And now the ordinance? Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Yes. Waddington? That ordinance is adopted. Item number six, please. Item number six is the first reading of a resolution requesting reimbursement from the Erie County Solid Waste Management District through the Community Grants Program for expenses relating to the city's cleanup and recycling events. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Twine. I move the adoption of this resolution under the first reading. Second. A motion, second. Discussion. Uh, my, my only question is, given the amount that's uh, involved, why is, it this, why is this something that the commission votes on, Mr. Hayberger? Is it because we're requesting reimbursement from another entity, or wouldn't that ordinarily be something that staff is able to address without a vote of the commission? I suppose, uh, through you, Commissioner President, uh, I suppose um, we could have. I think historically we've always come here, so I think that's why, I, to be honest with you, I'd yeah, I should look have into it that way. <laughs> All right, but, thank you. Questions or comments? Ms. Cressy, would you poll the commissioners on the resolution, please? Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Fine? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Watting? Yes. That resolution is adopted subject to another vote at the next meeting. Mr. Whoopser, we turn the meeting over to you for your city manager report, please. Thank you, Commission President, commissioners, audience, and staff, starting with the donations. First, a donation of military tribute pole banners was received for placement of Veterans Park, as was voted on by the Erie County Veterans Park Committee, and ask for a motion to accept that donation. So moved. Second. It's been a motion and second. Discussion. Well, the, without objection, the motion be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved with our thanks. Thank you. Uh, second, a donation of $25 to the K-9 Fund was received from Rhonda and Denise Roberts. It asked for a motion to accept that donation. So moved. Second. It's been a motion and second. Discussion? Without objection, the motion be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved with our thanks to the Roberts. And finally, the Veterans Memorial Park Committee donated a Gold Star Family Memorial. The memorial is in Veterans Park to honor families of fallen service members. The monetary value of this in-kind donation is $21,390, which includes $19,150 in materials and $2,250 in <coughs> services. I'd ask for a motion to accept that donation. So moved. In motion, second. Discussion? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Poole. Uh, it seems pretty significant. What exactly is this? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful new uh, memorial in Veterans Park, um, they unveiled it on uh, the day, the Sunday before Memorial okay. Day. That's why. Uh, and uh, it's really just gorgeous. They did raise the funds from local foundation and private donors, uh, Mylander Foundation and Dorn Foundation, I think. Uh, maybe the Susquehanna Community Foundation. I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that one. We're all major contributors. That's fine. I understand. It's a donation to pay for something that we'd already done. That's what, when it yeah. said, I wasn't sure what it was. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, did I take a vote on that? I don't think I did. So, uh, without objection, the motion be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved. With our thanks to the committee. Uh, moving on to administration. This weekend, Discover Sandusky, a magazine-style publication, will debut uh, in the Sandusky Register's weekend edition. This publication showcases the benefits of living and recreating in Sandusky through the eyes of local residents and businesses. Many partners came together to make this project a reality, including the Register and the Media, Fire Island Regional Medical Center, Cedar Point, Savista Bank, Lake Erie Shores and Islands, the Marketplace at Cook, and the City of Sandusky. Also for the police, Coffee with a Cop at Berardi's was very successful. The Sandusky Police Department teamed up with the Perkins Police Department as a joint effort to reach out to residents in both communities. 
and Detective Kevin Yuskovitz graduated from the PLSA on uh, Friday, June 7th. PSLA Public Safety Leadership Academy is an innovative 11-week accredited college-level program. The course curriculum is designed so that participants will be able to develop and improve skills necessary to manage and direct any division within a law enforcement agency. So we congratulate Sergeant Yuskovitz uh, on that uh, completion of that program. Also for the fire department, the Suski Fire Department achieved the 2019 Lifeline EMS Silver Plus Quality Achievement Award. The American Heart Association recognizes that pre-hospital personnel are the first providers of care to patients suffering from a STEMI heart attack and are an integral part of the STEMI system of care, impacting the overall care and outcome of the patient. This achievement illustrates a commitment to providing guideline-based care while meeting the high standards of performance. For the Finance Department, uh, they're requesting a public hearing on Monday, June 24th regarding the 2020 tax budget, which is required per the Ohio Revised Code section 5705.30 and the next scheduled finance committee meeting is friday june 21st 2019 in this room at 8 a.m uh, for the planning the first oh, just one moment yeah. please uh, i think uh, mr Haberger, do we need a, a motion to set the public hearing for the tax budget it wouldn't hurt okay all right would someone care to make such a motion so moved. second Been a motion discussion Without objection, the motion will be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved and the hearing is set. All right, moving on to planning. The first walkway and hike Hancock community event will be held Wednesday, June 12th at 5 30 p.m. Although it's not an official starting location, as this is more of an open event, people could meet in East Park. The purpose of the event is to help create a sense of community and a culture of walkability for the community. There will be food vendors, a hands on public art project opportunities to help with the Hancock Garden and Hancock Planners, an initiative that Mr. Uh, Commissioner Lockhart has helped to get off the ground and continues to assist with. Uh, kids games and various organizations along the way. We encourage residents of the streets to take part or be outside in their porches. Uh, the event will run from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Uh, also, STS is seeing impressive increases in a continued basis in its fixed route ridership numbers for May 2018. Uh, ridership numbers were 7,430. In May of this year, ridership was 24,813, so we tripled the amount of riders on the bus, and you can see it. And unfortunately, we found that in our busiest lines at the busiest times of day, people are actually being turned away from the buses because they're too full, and so we're looking at different options for how to either add additional buses or eventually larger buses to those routes, um, which financially is very difficult, but is clearly needed when uh, there's standing room only and people actually having to wait for the next bus and then an hourly service that can create a, a challenge. But this is a huge uh, and tremendous increase. So congratulations to Angie and Nicole and the rest of the planning team on continuing to, to push those numbers up. Uh, also the regular planning command, and we think that, you know, we've been doubling the numbers on a monthly basis. The addition of Cedar Point's full-time staff and this year's first partnership uh, is a real boost to that ridership. But I think it's exciting because they used to have a weekly service that would take those folks out to 250 or Walmart. Now all those buses are hubbing out of downtown Sandusky. Uh, so if they would take them from the dorms to the, the transit hub at the Social Security office, and they're maybe discovering downtown and finding there's a lot of things that they can meet their needs there instead of heading out all the way to 250. So we think that over time that'll lead to an increased economic spend from the seasonal employees while they're in town. Uh, also, the regular planning commission meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, June 26 at 240 Columbus Avenue. The regular Board of Zoning Appeals meeting will be scheduled for Thursday, June 20th in the first floor conference room of 222 Meg Street in this building. So this is getting confusing. We're going to have to clear. People are going to have to check the website because the, the meetings over the next few weeks are going to be moving around. But uh, the Landmark Commission meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, June 19th at 4.30 p.m. in this building in the first floor conference room. <coughs> And the regular Arts and Culture Committee meeting is scheduled for June 18th at 5 p.m. also in this building <coughs> in the first floor, or in the second floor conference room. Uh, for recreation, the Sandusky Recreation Department is hosting a 50-year celebration of Sandusky Parks in Central Park at 4 p.m. on Saturday, June 15th. Park staff and participants are invited to celebrate the past five decades of the program with stories, games, and meet and greet with the current and former staff. And finally, the Sandusky Recreation Department will host a grand opening for the new pump track at the Sandusky Skate Park on Friday, June 21st from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The event will be presented to thank the many partners and individuals who have helped make the track a reality. 
including Tom Ritzenthaler, Tyler Truman, Pump Tracks USA, Hanson Aggregates, Tough Man Equipment and Supply, Messenberg Brothers Trucking, Uriel, Uri Materials, Mona Pizza, and many volunteers. And for those of you who haven't had a chance to check that out yet, it has been slammed with children of all ages and sizes and races and gender. It's, I mean, it's been an incredible display of the youth and diversity of Sandusky, and so I want to thank the rec department and everybody who helped make that possible, but it's one of my favorite small projects that I've seen us do here since I've been here because it clearly uh, reached a new audience and touched an urban. I know Tom Ritzen Dollar and Tyler and Jason had really planned for a while to see if it was possible, and, and it really did come together well, so we're very thankful and thrilled for that. But that concludes my remarks for this evening, and I'm happy to answer any questions. From Thank you, Ms. Wiltshire. Commissioner's questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lloyd. Um, just a, in addition to um, an announcement he made for recreation, um, the 50-year celebration um, at Central Park, the same day I think there is um, a green dusty grill out at Lions Park at 2 p.m., um, and I think it's being, it's being led by the Youth Commission. So I think it just popped up on Facebook, so I don't know. It may have not made the manager's report. <laughs> yeah, that, I think we had it last time. I think you did. Was, was it on the last one? Okay. The reminder is good. Okay, so just a reminder then. Nope, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I, we can check and make sure that we have all those dates right. And okay. Another big push online for the Youth Commission event as well. Mm -hmm. Additional questions or comments? Any items of old business? Mr. Chairman, I got uh, two things. Uh, I was hoping, I had a conversation with the city manager last week. At some point this month, if we could have the business round table and then maybe Mr. Volts uh, for the downtown parking, explain that uh, a little more thoroughly. Uh, I don't, I've ran into uh, probably five or six residents that question the parking and the theme. We had one time, I believe you were at the meeting and maybe Mr. Brady, uh, talking about STS picking them up at the Shelby Street boat ramp. I remember the original meeting that we had here in the evening, and we threw out a bunch of ideas, but uh, I'm not sure where's the follow up. We're, you know, we got the little maps, but maybe if we had a business roundtable to get out for the businesses downtown also, too. So I, I, I think there's some uh, uh, unintentional miscommunication, I guess is the best way to put it. I think that'd be a good topic. Yeah, I think you've helped us, helped us schedule an hour the next yeah. in the next couple yeah. weeks, kind of, so we can... At this, oh, sorry, through the commission president, Commissioner Waddington, Waddington to do it at a commission meeting or to do it at a, a different meeting? Oh, about the, the, round, the round table. Oh, like the round table group. like okay. these do. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Remember I talked to you last week about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping that maybe uh, Mr. Paul's could be here today. Uh, there's just a lot of communication. The original meeting didn't convey back up. I didn't think very well. That we I, have. I, I, I think it's one of those things that you're right. Those, it's one of these things that you just need constant communication um, so that everybody understands what it is we're trying to object to achieve and how it is we're going to try to achieve it. So, and get feedback on what, what's working and what isn't. So, yeah, that'd be great. Mr. Kresser, if you could help schedule that, I think we'd appreciate that. Yes, I know there isn't very much going on right now. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know it's busy, but you know, we're going to be, it'll be July and then, you know, half a season. Yeah, before you know. We'll the uh, uh, second follow-up thing is uh, we had a, a lot of extents, but I know Mr. Brady's been to Overland and a few other places. And I've attended some meetings on the recycling. Uh, at one point, uh, you know, we removed it, put it out there, and I had suggested table a 30-day window, and then some others said, uh, maybe like 90 days and take a snapshot. Where is that at? Uh, I go out there once in a while and just kind of peek around. It looks like it's staying cleaner, but is the traffic volume up? Or is it the 5% that Mr. Brady maybe suggested? So where did I learn this today? Somebody explained to me that we got some equipment from the county to do a count, and then they, they needed it back before we could do a, a meaningful count. And then so we are in the process of Installing a camera there to do a count. I, is that me, you, Mr. Klein, who told me that, Mr. Brady? It was Mr. Brady. Oh, Mr. Brady. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't remember. It's a, it's a busy day. So, uh, so that, that's where that is. So we get a count of how much is being used. So we're we're spending what about five thousand a month right now just for that one site. <coughs> that's right. Yeah. Mr. Brady. Is that correct, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. The, the the cost. Uh, this board. I had Kelly. I don't recall these things. So I had Kelly do the the dirty work for me, and I had her retrieve minutes from that pertain to recycling and motions made at this table over the last few years. And many of you have supported 
in some fashion uh, <coughs> reviewing uh, two things. Uh, surveillance on, on the areas that we're collecting recycling to see if we are being burdened by commercial commercialization of that. Uh, and, and number two, uh, just trying to figure out uh, how many people, how, how uh, broad the, the use of these areas are. I asked uh, uh, Stuart to uh, secure bids on, on a camera, and we find out that it's very inexpensive to do that. Um, we're going to spend about $1,875 for a very effective surveillance camera as opposed to having someone sit there and, and observe people. Uh, I think that'll do a couple of things that will share with uh, share with us what kind of volume we really have, <coughs> what kind of penetration we have in recycling number one, but probably more importantly, are we getting commercial use of that that's inappropriate? The other component of that, and I believe Commissioner Poole has suggested this on more than one occasion, and that is uh, better signage or more explicit signage as to what is permitted in that recycling center. And I think we would like to review that also and maybe kind of clean that up or clear that up. And I think once uh, once that system is in place, uh, I think I think it's incumbent upon us to perhaps look at that data over not just a month, but let's look at it over two or three months and not rush to judgment on any of these things. I think if we have a clear understanding of how we can make that available to residents, if we can make it available to them more effectively, that's one thing. If it's not being used, then I think you know we have to make a decision. Do we want to continue to spend $50,000 a year on, on a very small fraction of people that are recycling? But I think this is perhaps uh, the first step in what might be a rather long journey. Mr. Chairman? Cool. Uh, with regard to tracking how much it's used, um, the cameras are fine. Uh, I would think that we could measure the, uh, the amount of trash that's taken out of there. Don't we have a record of what they've hauled? I mean, really, the goal here is, is how much plastic and stuff that recycle in volume rather than necessarily how many people actually use it. And just to compare before and after. Mr. Chair, that's Mr. one Mr. thing. That, that, that will provide you with a volume, but mm -hmm. uh, I guess our concern, and Mr. Waddington's pointed this out to me on several occasions, that. <laughs> When he visits the site, he sees, you know, people illegally dumping uh, trash there. By illegally dumping trash, meaning commercial, uh, commercial people dumping their waste from their business there, or their recyclables from their business there. Now that, you know, that the, the idea of recycling uh, for this is meant for citizens, for residents, and not meant for commercial use. So to just gauge the volume, I think, is to kind of miss the target quite dramatically. Yeah, I didn't suggest just. I added it to what you're already doing. Oh, I see. Okay. Additionally, the, uh, with regard to signage, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, if you simply go out to Erie County, they have perfect signage right on the front with their, it, it, it details what is mixed trash, what is cardboard, on, what, what they want, and that would, if we agree with what's on their sign, we can simply just duplicate it. I think there's three of them out there. It's pretty, very self-explanatory. Additional items of all business. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lloyd. Um, I apologize. I didn't give Mr. Hansen a very good introduction. I thought he was going to say a few words before he left the room. So just for the audience at home, um, Christopher Hansen actually was one of the survivors from the Pulse mass shooting. So um, he is... Um, he lived in Sandusky beforehand, and he's back in Sandusky working for Cedar Point. So he was very, very excited to be here tonight and receive that proclamation. Um, his goal and focus now is to, um, he's reaching out across the country to cities asking for them to um, basically create a Reflections of Resilience Day, and he would like to get to the point where it's a national holiday. So um, thank you for all the support and for him. Um, working towards this goal. So just wanted everyone else to know um, the hard work that he's putting in. And he was just very, very excited that he's back in town and that the city that he um, lives in is supporting him and his efforts. Additional items of old business. Any items of new business? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddington. Um, as you know, I, I go off a little bit now that I'm retired, a little bit more than I want. And uh, I know we've had a wet season but we've got a lot of uh, uh, older equipment out there. We got the uh, 
fairway gains, and I know I've talked, I've had discussions with you. Mr. Brady even come out, and I kind of showed him around. Uh, we got one zero turn, one fifty-two inch Toro to stand up where you have to stand up to cut the grass. Uh, gangs more, and I would like to make a motion that we get one more commercial zero turn, either forty-eight or sixty inch to help. Not only now, but during the season, there, that's a lot of grass. And the staff we have out there, you know, they're kicking butt. That's tough to keep up with. We had a nice article in the paper today. The clubhouse looks great. Uh, Tom's doing a good. You know, the manager's doing a good job inside. Uh, but it's the outside. It's just uh, tough to keep up with. And uh, uh, next year's the 80th anniversary of the golf course. It's been around a long time. And I just think. Uh, uh, on the exterior, I'm worried about losing more customers over the last couple of years as far as upkeep. It's tough to, you know, they're uh, making nine, ten bucks an hour cutting that grass out there. It's not like they're uh, full time employees. Mr. Chair, is part time help. So, if, you, if, you, if you bring a second. No, no, no. no. Well, we don't have a second yet. Be, before, he, well, we before you get there, I just wanted to. You can't talk until you second it. All right, you did make a motion. All right, second. Okay, motion second. Mr. Lockhart. Sure. <laughs> okay. I think mean, I'm going to do it for the court right, for right. your oil. You're right, you're right. Uh, I toured the golf course with the golf course manager some time ago. And before we, just as a thought, before we buy any equipment, we should take an analysis of the golf course as a whole because you as an avid golfer would know that we don't have true greens out there. And so the, the proper equipment that we would need to make it more palatable to more golfers would require an upgrade of some of the lawnmowers and things that we have. And maybe if we're going to make an upgrade, maybe we can make the best upgrade that we can to attract or retain more of the golfers that are there so that we have, you know, a true golfing experience out there that's equivalent to some of the other courses. Do you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, if you want to. Uh, uh, a lot of the comments now is we wish we were playing at Washington Park or Central Park, you know, and th that bo that really bothers me. At first, I kind of laughed about it, you know, but uh, uh, they're right. We got a lot of you know senior citizens that work, you know, play out there, we're trying to attract more kids. We got the high school team that plays out there, and I think one piece of equipment could make a substantial difference. Uh, uh, Mr. Brady, I. Took you out and toured you around, so maybe you could chime in. <laughs> you saw what it's like an Easter egg hunt, trying to, you know. And just I know it's wet now, but it gets wet in July and gets wet in the fall too. We just have tough times keeping it up, Mr. Brady. I I uh, I'm not opposed certainly to someone performing an in-depth analysis of what would make that a better golf course, but let me remind you that the grass is growing right now, right. and we need to buy this mower. Mr. Wyatt and his motion and has been seconded tonight. And I think it does a couple of things. Can you imagine, can any of you imagine cutting the amount of grass out there on a stand-up one more? It, it, I, I just I can't imagine the state of age doing that. I, I'm embarrassed to tell you that we, for very good reasons, we have not updated the gangable mowers since the 70s. Imagine that. Gangable mowers that are now almost 50 years old. So for us to spend 5000 bucks. On a, on a zero turn more, I think is, is very prudent, and I think it will do a couple things. It will help get the grass mowing, but it will also raise the morale of the three, four, five people that are working out there. It will say, "What well, now? We have a piece of equipment that we can get our job done." So I, I think it, that would be money very well spent. So, Mr. To Mr. Mr. Lockhart, to your point, I, I recently had a conversation with Mr. Wilkeser about taking a, a more comprehensive look at what we're doing with the golf course. Um, you know, as Mr. Waddington often says, what, what do you say? It's a lunch bucket? It's a lunch pail golf course. Yes. Yeah. Just and, for and regular guys that want to. And, and it's great. Um, and, you know, some people are critical of the fact that we lose money on the golf course. We lose money in all of our parks. Their, their, their parks aren't there to make money. Um, and so, but I absolutely agree we should take a closer look at it, make sure we're providing what people need today, what they're looking for in a course, that we remain competitive at some level. Because otherwise, um, you know, we are at risk. And, you know, we all know what's happening with, to golfing. Uh, uh, golfing is um, really decreased in popularity a tremendous amount. Unfortunately, there are people like. Well, yes, and that's that's always good for, for golfing, no question about it. But you know, thank goodness we have people like Mr. Waddington who find themselves golfing more than they want to. It's just puzzling at that how you can golf more than you want to. Uh, I, I assume he's getting kicked out of the house now that he's retired, but. <laughs> Well, 
Uh, it's not so much the entire golf course, but the piece of equipment that it may be slightly more expensive than we do. What, what Mr. Washington wants and what I'm suggesting is making a better green. So that's what I'm saying. So we probably can do the same thing by just taking a look at the equipment. I don't know who's here from, somebody here from that department. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I understand. You know what I, mean? I, I, I believe uh, we were going to purchase a piece off Sawmill when they were going through their acquisition as far as that golf course, and they decided to keep their own equipment. Uh, I'm certain Todd Gibson, the former, would have you know a good idea. They got him around uh, construction supply. I know they're around they're right around five five thousand in that area. Okay, there's a motion and second. Mr. Discussion. Chairman, cool. Um, I believe that uh, we should have a, a great golf course. I think if anybody wants to play nine-hole golf in, in this area, we want them to come to Sandusky and play at our, ours, at our course. Uh, with regard to this, who, why hasn't the staff requested this? This process of how we got here is what I have concerns about, or just questions about. It's like if we, if. We've got departments and staff that look overlook this. If it's not in the budget, why not? Why is it suddenly a need that somebody that golf says we need, but it's never come before us before? Why isn't why is it on the list? I mean, we bought millions of dollars worth of things. I don't have a ready answer to that, Mr. Whoops, are you a little bit And before we spend money, yeah. we, that, that should be done. That concept of picking up a piece of used equipment from somebody else isn't really the direction I particularly want to go with our golf course. If we're going to do things for the community, it needs to be first class all the way with some justification. You know, we justify it while we do it. But just cobbling something together because you, you're tired of seeing a guy ride a standing lawnmower, which those standing, they're commercially used. I see people all over, not all over, but I have seen them used by commercial companies that cut grass for money. Mr. Wilson, uh, through the commission president to Commissioner Poole, I think the city has a number of uh, equipment needs. We had uh, Director Klein dealing with some of those tonight as it related to vehicles. Uh, and certainly for all of our departments, and particularly probably our divisions that are uh, revenue-driven or business enterprise-type departments like the golf course, we try to be as cost-conscious as possible as far as uh, making sure that we're not, you know, subsidizing those enterprise divisions at the expense of the general fund. That being said, uh, we try to be opportunistic, and so I think this conversation was started at least in part when there was a really potentially unique opportunity with Sawmill making some changes to look at equipment that we might have been able to utilize for the sake of the golf course in a really affordable way. That being said, uh, then ultimately because they pulled back that equipment, we didn't have a chance to make that purchase at that time. But I do think, you know, Mills is something that we have a wish list for ultimately, and it's a matter of just matching up revenue and opportunity. And, and we know that Commissioner Waddington and others are taking a close look at this. And so based on this feedback, knowing that, it's, that the commission is willing to expend some resources to provide appropriate equipment to make sure it's mowed and it's taken care of, and this has been a wet spring, I think the best course of action would be to get together with Jason and the golf course manager with uh, the appropriate people at Public Works and the Fleet Maintenance Division and come up with what the best piece of equipment is for the golf course and bring that back to the commission, maybe amongst a package of other things that we can look at for Mills for its 80th birthday next year to make improvements to make sure that we're celebrating the history of that course but also positioning it to succeed over the next several years. Mr. Chairman. Uh, we, I, I sent you back some emails from 17 and 16, so we've had this been an ongoing conversation that we had, you know, going back and forth. And you said how disappointing it was. Uh, recently, or back a few months ago, the rec board voted to get a new piece of equipment. Mr. Chairman, um, the rec board did vote, but that was when we thought we were going to be getting something from Sawmill Creek. Um, so as that fell through, um, I do um, like what the city manager just said. Why don't we ask Jace, uh, Jason and the greenhouse staff to, to assess the situation and come up with a recommendation? I think that was probably be, that will probably be the best course of action. Quickly, we'll do it quickly. So that yeah, if we put a timeline on it, you know, come back to us in a, in a month. I'd say by sorry through the commission, president commission, based on the urgency of this golf season, I think we should be ready by next, next for the recommendation next by the next meeting. Yeah. 
Are we looking at equipment only, only or are we looking at? Well, uh, through the commission president to commissioners uh, Lockhart and others, my my thought was it was raised about the mowing, and that is what I know what we're looking at for sawmill. But we can we can just take a really quick scan of what the needs are, what the most pressing thing is, and if it's a mower, uh, you know, we'll start with the mowers because that was what was mentioned tonight, and then come back as quickly as possible uh, and see if we can identify resources to make that purchase as well. Sure. So, just in that same vein. Uh, Last year, when the YMCA closed, I, I had asked for an analysis of the YMCA to become a recreation center or the potential for it for our, uh, our area. And of course, staff has delved into that, as we can see. So, and, and in that same vein, um, if, if it possible, it doesn't have to be in the next three days, of course, but to look at incorporating the golf course inside of the YMCA with the rec center, thereby consolidating everything that, that way we have a stronger uh, recreation department a central area for people to go for activities uh, not only golf but all the activities where they can go and plan sign up you know you name it would be there at the YMCA if we can do that and that way it's since it's right on top of the, uh, the uh, golf course we may be able to use part of the building some of the building but uh, it be a strong resource Maybe it's through leasing or whatever you might come up with but that's that's where we set out, or at least that's what I had asked for last time. We set out about you're doing this. Well, I, and I can understand the logic of that, but I mean, the YMCA building uh, has a lot of inherent problems. The two pools are shot. Uh, we would be pouring millions into that. And I don't know. And it may be that they don't use the pool. That's why I say a portion of the building yeah. are all. That's the way you do analysis. And the other problem that the Y suffered from was not being centrally located. You know, if we are looking at a, a rec center, I would like to see it. More, I, I would like to see it more centrally located. I think it would serve more residents better. Well, there's been there because we have the golf course, which is our property. Yes, that's and true. We have a rec center, so like I said, it, it's up to whatever the staff can find on it. But if it becomes Mr. something, Mr. Chairman, I, th I think um, we're, we're kind of blending into yes, things sorry, here. Yes. So I think I, I would like to keep that separate. Um, keep the Mills Creek golf course and the needs for making sure we can get that taken care of as soon as possible. Um, assessing the, the usefulness of the why, I think that's a bigger, broader discussion that's going to take a lot more time. I should have said you were out of order, but Thank I didn't. You. So well, don't say it before. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> What's stopping you? <laughs> and nothing. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mr. Poole. Mr. Uh, Sorry. Mr. Through Mr. the Poole, Commission sir. President to Commission Earth Wines Point. The staff is undertaking with community partners and intends to go more public later this summer a broader analysis of what the recreation needs are. I know that came up at the State of the City this year, so we absolutely hope by the end of this year to bring back a recommendation to this commission on how to move forward, and I'm sure that many of you will be engaged as that process goes forward, but uh, it'll analyze different sites, partnerships with schools, partnerships with other organizations, and then ultimately make a recommendation of what the best fit is for Sandusky. Um, so everything is on that list currently. Nothing's been eliminated, but obviously over the course of the next several months, we hope to narrow that down to, to where the right location is and what the right type of partnership is for that building. So this is going sideways. You were out of order, then I was out of order. <laughs> you were out of order. Sorry, I was just trying to clear it out. You're not out of order. Motion is for a long order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that's a lawnmower. All that's a lawnmower. I don't need a building. We already bought the lawnmower. We don't need a building. 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 We don't how would go from trimming grass to Mr. Mr. Cool. Um, <clears throat> I suggest we vote this down for this reason. First of all, it's in listening to conversation, the lawnmower costs $5,000, so we don't need to be involved anyway. And if it's under 10, between 5 and 10, we still don't have to be involved. We made it exceedingly clear that we support doing this, and I suggest we just get out of the way. And they can come back to us with a proposal that meets, that tells what we need at the, at the golf course. And it appears that it's the pleasure here that lawnmowers be on the top of the list regardless of what you come up with. So, and that's the way it should have been done to begin with. I don't understand how they voted to get one. We never heard about it. And then it just died because you couldn't buy junk from somebody else. And I, and I realize I'm being provocative, but it bugs me. Mr. Chairman. It's like, it, it's, it, to, it to never answer. got it. Why is it coming up now when it should have been taken care of in the budget to begin with in, in January, back in January? To, to answer Commissioner Poole's uh, question about 
how come we didn't know about it before? It was going to be absorbed through the rec park department's budget. So that's why it wasn't something that came to this table. So in light of the discussion, um, Mr. Waddington, knowing that we're going to have a, a short-term uh, um, uh, response, I wonder if uh, you might be thinking about making a motion to table the motion uh, for the time being until we hear what staff's recommendations are. I will do that, but you'll get 50 emails from me from the last two or three years. You know, I send them to you, <laughs> like little reminders, like, I don't forget nothing. You're well no, aware of that. I, I'm, I'm well aware of that. <laughs> Stuff you said are brought up and followed up, and you had discussion with certain folks here. Right? Elephants uh, forget more. Huh? Uh, I said elephants forget more. But no, I mean, you know, look, I, I completely agree with you. Okay. Uh, we have been talking for two, three years exactly. about the need to reinvest in the golf course. Um, you know, and, and I realize we are doing so much. This is not a critique of staff, but we are doing so much, it's hard to know where to prioritize. I think what staff is hearing tonight is that, you know, this is a priority. Mr. Poole spoke to it. You spoke to it. I spoke to it. Mr. Brady spoke to it. And not everyone has spoken on this issue, but I, I mean, I think you can hear that we're pretty passionate about it. <coughs> this is something that makes Sandusky special. I mean, nobody else has something like this around here. Um, and I, I think there's a way we can find a balance where we can provide an affordable golfing opportunity, but provide a quality op golfing opportunity um, and continue this great investment for as long as the public wants to golf. You know, 20 years from now, 10 years from now, I don't know. So many people may have hung up their clubs that that it, uh, it isn't something that we uh, provide anymore, but I think for a little while longer we should. So. Mr. Chairman, Mr. this started back with the diocese talks because we're handcuffed every year. I think this year to the tune of about 40000 from the Catholic cemeteries, okay? And I'm not going to involve that today, but that puts us in a deep hole right there. And then a lot of it is weather-related. I understand that. But uh, as you age, you get fatigued, and as the equipment ages, it gets fatigued, okay? Wait a so minute. I don't know about that analogy. <laughs> that's my that's my word. Okay. I'm done. Can I, can I second, cool. it? Can I yes. second the table? I think that's a motion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is tabled for two weeks. Okay. Other items of new business. Mr. Chairman. It's fine. I have a vacancy on the rec board. Um, Mr. McKenna, um, whose term ends 20, December 31st, 2021. Um, he can no longer... Um, serve out his term, I'd like to uh, nominate Elizabeth Collins Fisk to fill out the remainder of Mr. McKenna's term. Second. It's been a motion and second. Discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and the appointment is made. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Twine. I have three uh, vacancies on the Community Relations Commission. Um, and I'm assuming I'll have to take these up separately, each, don't, each Just one don't ask Trevor, one. and you can do them all at once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first one is uh, Charlene Adams, whose term ends December 31st, 2020. I'd like to nominate Blake Harris to uh, fulfill the remainder of that term. There's been a motion. Second. A motion, second. Discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The appointment is made. Uh, the second vacancy is Jennifer Washington, <laughs> whose term ends December 31st, 2020. I'd like to no nominate Daniel Williams. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. Been a motion and second. Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The, the motion prevails and the appointment is made. And then the last one is Wendy Dobbins. Her term ends December 31st, uh, 2021. I'd like to nominate Vilicia K to fill the remainder of that term. Second. It's been a motion and second. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and the appointment is made. There is one other vacancy on the Landmark Commission. There have been several folks who um, have submitted their applications to serve on the Landmark Commission. Um, very, very qualified people, so we're going to take just a little bit more time and to figure out who the best appointment is to make. Uh, we're just very fortunate to have so many qualified people who have indicated interest. But hopefully we'll get to that at the next meeting. Other items of new business? Not then. We'll turn to audience participation. Anyone wishing to address the Commission, please step to the microphone share with us your thoughts. 
Seeing no one, seeing no one move to the microphone, and would someone care to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Stand adjourned.